Okay, so let's start with uh, quantization. So we'll introduce actually three techniques, including smooth quant for 8-bit uh, quantization and AWQ for 4-bit quantization, and finally tiny chat that implements those 4-bit quantized model on hardware. And these techniques have been integrated by the uh, NVIDIA Tensor RT LLM, which was just open source the last week. So this is a pretty timely lecture. Welcome to try the TRT LLM. Let's review what is quantization we've covered in lecture five and also, uh, and also lecture six. Basically, we map uh, the range of the floating point range into integer values. Okay, so we have the Q min and Q max. We have a zero point mapping the zero point to the floating floating number zero. Uh, so this is an example of two-bit quantization where we have four centroid where each centroid is representing like from minus two, minus one, zero, and one. So can we directly apply the quantization techniques we've learned in lecture uh, in the previous lecture to large language model? Actually, we tried it, but it failed. Right when the large the model gets larger, uh, more than uh, six billion parameters. The performance degradation is actually actually pretty severe. We see a pretty big accuracy degradation when the model gets larger. So um, we find actually this is due to large language model has outliers in the activations, making the large language model difficult to quantize. So let's see what is the um, uh, what is the outliers. So this is showing uh, the outliers in the activation. So this is showing the weight. What is the difference here? So laws of outliers, like this channel, this channel, this channel, these three channels has values that is much larger than the remaining uh, than the remaining channels. But the weight is pretty flat. The range is pretty small between zero and one. But here the value of the activation is between zero and 70, even larger than 70. So such large dynamic range makes activation difficult to quantize. But the weights are really just so easy to quantize. So how do we deal with it? A natural thinking, a very smart way to think about it is actually, can we um, multiply this channel by a, like 0 0.1 and enlarge the weight by 10 times? Even enlarging it by 10 times, it's still pretty small. And the key principle is that matrix multiplication is linear. Right? X times W, we can multiply X by 0 0.1 and we can multiply w by 10, so the final result is still the same. So in this way, we can flatten, smooth those activations to make it feel more flat, where we no longer have those big values. Okay? And here is this, uh, the weight. The weight is harder to quantize due to it's slightly more bumpy than this case, but it's still, compared with here, it's still relatively easy to quantize. So here we effectively migrated the quantization difficulty from the activation to the weight, making them um, easy to quantize. So how do we do that in practice? So this is showing an example where we have activation, we have the weight. Initially, you have two outlier channels. So here we have pretty big channel, minus 16, 8. And here you have a pretty big channel, 6 and 9. And the weight is relatively flat. And we calculate a, uh, a scaling factor, a okay? scaling factor uh, 1, 4, 1, 3, which is uh, obtained by um, dividing the, the number having the square root of the max of the x and also the max of w. Okay? So the max of x, for example, here, the max is 16. The max of the w here is 1. So divided divide that, and then you have the square root of that, you get four in this position, okay? In that way, we can convert the matrix multiplication in another way. They are mathematically equal, like 16 multiplied by one equal to four minus, uh, times four, okay? And similar here, um, eight times one equal to uh, two times four. So they are still mathematically equal, but here, we no longer have these huge outlier channels in the smooth quantization activation, right? So this effectively smooths the, uh, the activation, 
So what is the, uh, there's no free lunch, right? To smooth the activation, what is the uh, overhead here? Which one gets harder to quantize? The weight, right? Previously, the weight is just super easy to quantize, one, two, right? But now uh, it gets slightly harder, but still within our control. Slightly harder, but still okay to be quantized. So by using this way, everything is still mathematically equal. And how do we deal with this scaling factor? Do we have to introduce some actual computation to do such um, matrix quantification? Like we are multiplying um, s to the power of minus 1 to x, and we are multiplying s to w. Since this one, these two, they cancel each other, they are identity matrix. So we need to add actual computing to here. For weight, it's easy. We can fold the scaling factor to the weight offline, right? And for the activation, this is a hyperparameter, it's a constant number, no matter what input it is. So we can fold this into the layer norm of the previous layer. Right? Last lecture, we introduced the layer norm, uh, which is having a bias, having a scaling factor. So here we are exploiting that, that scaling factor uh, to uh, multiply the certain channels. So that can be folded into the previous uh, normalization layer. So at the runtime, there is no actual overhead at all. So mathematically equal, no runtime overhead. Everything can be computed during compile time. So here we, uh, we can quantize both the weight and activations for all those compute intensive kernels, including the QKV transformation, uh, BMM in the attention, uh, QK transpose, and um, at times V. Finally, the output projection layer and two FFN layers. Okay? Only these layer norm soft max layers is capped in FP16. So now we can match the accuracy. Previously, we lose the accuracy when the model is larger than 6.7 billion. Now the accuracy recovered. And let's see, what about the latency and also the memory? So previously, this is the uh, previous memory. Now the memory is reduced by half. Okay? So in order to serve uh, this is OPT175 billion parameter model used to require um, this eight A100 GPU to serve that. Now we, we need only four, okay? Reduce the number of GPUs by half. Now each GPU is pretty expensive. It's like 20K each. And now you immediately, sa immediately save the 80K dollars. What about the latency? Like in this, in this case, it's even faster, lower latency, since we don't need to communicate. Uh, everything is quantized to int 8 rather than FP16. And there's no com less communication, um, so the latency is even faster. What about even larger model, like um, uh, NLG, uh, MT, NLG, uh, Megatron, Turin, NLG 530 billion parameter model? So the accuracy is pretty well maintained. And here we can reduce the number of serving GPUs from 16 to 8. So each node is super expensive. It's like 200K for, uh, for uh, 300K for H100 and 180K for A100. So each node is pretty expensive. We can reduce it by, by half and also keep the latency the same. What about newer models like Llama? In the last lecture, we introduced uh, the open source model Llama, Llama 1, Llama 2. So what's the new, uh, what's new here? It introduced the uh, Swish GLU, right? Use the Swish activation function, turning those full, two fully connected layer into three layers, gated linear unit, referred to the last lecture, and also introduced this rotary relative positional encoding, if you remember that from the last lecture. Will these advanced changes impact the quantization? Actually, uh, smooth quant still works very well for this case to quantize llama families, llama one, llama two, make a large llama into a smaller llama. Um, this is llama 7b, 13b, 30b, all the way to 65b. Um, this is the perplexity. It's well, very well maintained. 